Good morning, everyone. Uh, great to see everyone. And whether you've been here for many years or this is your first time, it's great to have you all here. And uh, this morning, uh, things are a bit different as we're in uh, the church again and not in the community center. But hopefully, we've got enough space. But it's, it feels good to be back here. Um, this is quite loud, is it? Um, so today, we come together as one body to worship God to celebrate his goodness and to be reminded of his love and grace for each of us. But before we do, uh, I've got a few announcements. We do have the seniors lunch, I believe, this week. Um, that'll be this Wednesday, 12 o'clock. Um, so if you're over 60, come for a soup and some sandwich um, lunch. Um, if you have any questions about that, do see Rachel or Chris Mina for that. Um, and Andy is away today, as you know, so we've got Sam Wilkins here. Um, it's great to have you, Sam, and uh, up from Nidri Community Church. And he's doing theological training, but uh, um, many, how many years ago? It was about four years ago, God saved you from five years ago um, and, and done a great work in your life. So thanks. Uh, great to have Sam here. Um, and let's see what else. Next week and the following, we're going to be in the church again, not the community center, so do meet here. Um, and I think that's the last amount, announcement for this morning, but there is no Im impact club this Thursday due to voting, um, but the Teens Cafe is on as usual. Um, anything that I've missed? Oh, sounds good. Um, let's uh, begin our worship this morning by hearing from God's word. This is from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Let's stand and sing Psalm 100 um, just now. All people that on earth do dwell, sing.
Today we've got a number of things that we want to pray for, um, some big global things and uh, as we're going through the countries of the world, uh, Operation World has identified Palestine and it's very apt to be uh, praying for that area of the world and Palestine uh, this morning. So we want to pray for um, reconciliation between Israelis and Palestinians at this time. Uh, the airstrikes have increased and uh, the, the violence is, is there. We want to pray for um, the, uh, also Govan Free Church. Uh, they recently inducted uh, Reverend David McPherson uh, as their minister. I think that was even last week. So uh, we praise God for that. And um, yeah, just that whole congregation and uh, what God is doing in Govan. And uh, locally in Charleston, there's a number of items to pray for. We'll pray for our minister. So let's turn to the Lord in prayer uh, as we begin this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you in awe of who you are. You are the creator of all things, the Almighty, full of power and majesty. And yet you are also tender and compassionate, abounding in love and mercy. You are holy and righteous, perfect in all your ways, and your wisdom is beyond our understanding. You are faithful and true, never changing, always keeping your promises. You are a refuge, our strength, our comforter, and our guide. Lord, you are our everything. We adore you for your unfathomable grace, for your beauty that is beyond compare, and for the infinite love that you've poured out upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And in the knowledge of your mercy and grace through Christ, we come before you acknowledging our sin. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have allowed pride, selfishness, and impatience to lead us astray. We have often failed to trust you fully. Forgive us, Lord, for our words, thoughts, and actions, and inactions that have fallen short of your glory. Cleanse us from our sin and renew a right spirit within us. And Lord, we come with heavy hearts as we witness the escalating violence between Israel and Palestine. Lord, you see the devastation and suffering on both sides with the detonation of weaponized pagers and radios and this week increased airstrikes on Gaza. We lift up all who are affected by this conflict, especially the families, women, and children caught in the crossfire. We pray for an end to this violence and for the protection of all peoples, Israeli and Palestinian. Surround them with your peace and grant wisdom to the leaders as they seek solutions that honor life and justice. We remember the Christian communities in this region, many of whom are caught between these hostilities. Strengthen their witness as they provide spiritual and physical support to those in need. May they show of your love and compassion in these dark times. And may many turn to you as a result of seeing how Christians respond. Lord, we long for reconciliation. We ask for your spirit to soften hardened hearts that Israelis and Palestinians would seek paths of justice and peace. Break down the walls of hatred and division and guide them toward healing and understanding. And we also want to lift up the humanitarian organizations and churches working tirelessly to care for the displaced, the wounded, and the vulnerable. Provide the necessary resources and cooperation to bring aid where it is most needed. Lord, let your love be felt through the hands that serve. We pray for the leaders involved in ceasefire negotiations. Uh, because there are those that are God-fearing, grant them the courage to prioritize peace and human life above all else. Help all the leaders to speak up for justice and reconciliation and lead them to decisions that promote lasting peace. Lastly, we ask for your comfort and healing for those grieving uh, the loss of loved ones on both sides of the conflict. Uh, surround them with supportive communities and let your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, we also come before you with 
gratitude for Govan Free Church and its steadfast commitment to the Govan community. We thank you for the recent induction of David McPherson, and we ask for your blessings upon him and Martha as they settle into the congregation. May their ministry and govern, govern be centered on you, and please help them to lead with wisdom and compassion. We want to lift up the congregation and govern as well, strengthening Strengthen each member, fortifying their faith and commitment to one another and to your mission. May they be empowered to share the love of Christ boldly, drawing many in the community to faith through their witness. Help them to embody your love and grace in every interaction that they have in those, with those around them, from the weakest to the strongest. Help them to shine the light of Christ to everyone. We ask that when your church gathers there, that individuals can openly share their struggles and find encouragement in their faith. May these small groups foster deeper relationships, allowing members to walk alongside one another in love as they grow in discipleship together. Father, we also lift up ourselves here at Charleston Community Church. We thank you for the new members who joined last week, Stephanie, Iona, David and Kendra, Simon and Alice, Tammy and Edie. We, we pray that you would protect each of them from the evil one, Let me, and may they hold fast to you. We pray that everyone here would feel the love and support of one another, and may our faith grow as we serve alongside one another. We think, too, of the individuals and families just moved into Charleston as a result of the new housing developments. We thank you for the opportunity to welcome these newcomers through our welcome packs. We pray that we could form positive connections and new relationships within our community, reflecting the care you've first given to us. May those conversations that we have be beginnings of gospel opportunities that see lives transformed if these people don't know you yet or faith strengthened for those that do. We ask for you to be over these, uh, the distribution of these packs in the coming weeks. We pray, too, for the lives and ministries of everyone in our congregation. Lord, you know the unique needs of each individual. Bring healing to those who are struggling with illness or anxiety or addiction. Provide comfort for those who are grieving and grant grant hope to those feeling weary and depressed. Lord, come near to us all that your spirit would inhabit every part of our lives. And may this church be a place where your love is is felt deeply where we bear one another's burdens, and where we encourage one another to walk faithfully with you. Grant wisdom and compassion to those in leadership and empower each person to serve in the ways that you've gifted them. We especially lift up our pastor, Andy, and his family as they're enjoying their holiday in Australia and New Zealand, and may they delight in you as they visit those countries. Protect them in their their travels, especially as they look after Fenley, Lewis, and Eliana. Grant Andy and Kyrene rest and refreshment that they may return rejuvenated to continue the good work that you've called them to in Charleston. We also thank you for Sam Wilkins, our minister today, and the blessing that he is to those in Nidri Nidri especially. We lift up Sam, his wife, and their one-year-old son and ask for strength and patience in the trials of parenting. May they find joy and grace in their family life, and may Sam's theological and ministerial training be blessed by your wisdom and guidance as he prepares for your call into ministry as you see fit. Now, Father, be with us all as we worship today. Send us your spirit, convict us of sin and the power of the cross that we might be renewed in you today. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's now sing this to this great song that we've been speaking about and um, how great, how deep the Father's love for us. Um, this song beautifully expresses the depth of the Father's love for us, revealed through the sacrifice of Jesus, His Son. Grace and hope are ours in Christ. So please stand and sing.
Have a seat. Um, well, today we're in the book of Matthew again, but not where we have been uh, going through in, in the series that Andy's doing around chapters 21. We're back a few verses. That will be Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. And I believe in most of your Bibles, this is going to be on page 970 in the church Bibles. Give you a moment to turn there. Here in this passage, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray, and I'm going to read this uh, verse out to you. This is Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. This then is how you should pray Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I'm going to hand it over to Sam now to open up God's Word for us. Oh, nice one. Just take that with you. Thanks, bro. It's just that weird, does it? Yeah. Oh, I might get static in my beard. Mic check, one, two. Shall I just clip that there? I'll just put that in my pocket, yeah. Sound. Right, good morning, everyone. Morning. How are we all? All good, yeah? Fine, Tammy. Nice one, nice one, Tammy. <laughs> Listen, good to be with you here this morning. Um, as Tim said, myself and, and Rachel and a, a few others on, on the team, we're currently planting a church in Gorgie. And with 20 schemes, and as we're in this kind of pre-plant phase before the door doors are open, um, I'm not preaching as much as I was, so I was very grateful that Andy asked me to come up today and preach for you all. You may not be so grateful by the time I get to the end of the sermon, but we'll see how we go. So, as Tim said, we're in the Lord's Prayer this morning. Tim, uh, I'm gratefully just read verse 9. Um, but I think it's important that we read the whole prayer 
and a little bit before and a little bit after to help us get some context as to what is going on here, okay? So in your Bibles, uh, I, Tim knows the page, I'm sure you're already there. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 7 to 15, okay? Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 7 to 15. All there? All good. Let's read God's word. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Amen. This is God's sovereign word. Let me pray one more time. God Almighty and loving Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. Would your will be done today? And would you fill me with your Holy Spirit as I, I aim to, to preach from your holy word? And would you please give everyone here today the uh, eyes, the ears, the hearts, the minds to, to receive your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So from this verse this morning, this one verse, verse 9, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. There's kind of three things I want us to be looking at, all right? Who God is, especially to believers where God is, and what that says about who he is, and how these two things should help us pray, okay? Who God is, where God is, how that helps us pray. Now, I don't know about you, but quite often, maybe more often than I care to admit, I'm sat in my gaff, I'm sat in my house chilling, and suddenly I feel like, I feel like watching a film I've watched hundreds of times. Does anyone else ever get that? I get it a lot. I'm a, I'm a bit of a bit of a film filmy, if you like. Uh, and I had it the other day, and the film that popped into my head, I seen an advert for it, an old one, and I thought I'm going to watch that. Was a, a Mel Gibson classic called The Patriot. Have we all heard that film? Yeah. It's a banger, isn't it? Cracker, isn't it? Cracker. Well, and you might say this was God's providence, by the way, because it was about the same time I remembered I was preaching this morning. So I'm grateful that this this film came up. Anyway, Mel Gibson plays this guy in The Patriot called Benjamin Martin. Yeah, he's an American with a brave but brutal military past. And after one of his sons are uh, taken by the invading British forces, he, he flies back into action and he becomes the general of the colonial militia during the American Revolution. The men he gathers and turns into an army that they respect him. He's this great general, he's a fierce warrior, um, a great leader. And they have this kind of reverent fear of him because they know he's a great leader and a great general. And all through the film, you get this impression that Mel Gibson is this great, courageous, strong, warrior-like leader, but sometimes quite emotionally detached. He's strict, he's hard-lined, and doesn't have any messing around. This is until the end of the film, when you see Benjamin with his children. As he goes to leave, once again to fight off the enemy, he gets down on, on one knee to say goodbye to his little daughter, yeah, little Bo. He goes to hug her, and as he goes to hug her, she pulls away. She pulls away and doesn't say a word. You can see Mel Gibson, or Benjamin Franklin, he's hurt by this, really hurt by this, but the tough man that he is, he jumps on his horse and starts riding off to battle. As he's riding off to battle, his daughter chases after him with tears in her eyes, saying, Papa, Papa, please don't go. I'll say anything you want. Surprisingly, to the others around, he immediately jumps off his horse, runs to her, gets down on his knees again and hugs her with tears in her eyes. And he says, you make me so happy. The people watching were shocked. They'd never seen this side of this great emotionless general. And that's because it was a side he saved only for his children. 
only his children got to call the great general of the American militia father. Only Christians, God's children, get to call this great general of the universe father. For the believer, those who have repented of their sins and put their faith in Jesus, God is not cold, far off, and someone who, should be, who should, we should be scared of. He's not like that. A respectful fear, yes. I mean, he's created the universe. Come on. But fearful intimidation, no. He's the father who won't just go to battle for his children, but will jump off his horse to wipe away their tears and make sure they're okay too. And by the way, when we say our father, it's worth noting here, we are joining with brothers and sisters in Christ around the world and throughout time. When we say our Father in heaven, it means we are praying with the underground church in China. It means we are praying with the persecuted church in Afghanistan. I make this point to highlight the fact from the outset here that prayer is unbelievably powerful. And I think we've, I think we've lost that in the Western culture we live in today. I think we've forgotten how powerful prayer is. Some dead old theologian said this about prayer, which I thought was quite good. He said, God is sovereign and his plans and purposes will unfold according to his sovereign will. God does what he wants and it will happen, yeah? The amazing thing is, though, is that God has chosen to use the prayers of his people in the process. Christians, we are his people. And we won't be able to wrap our heads around it this side of new creation but God uses our prayers to fulfill his will. Isn't that amazing? Christians are children of God who have been adopted by him, and we have the privilege of calling him our Father in prayer. Isn't that amazing? The Apostle Paul says this in Romans, Romans chapter 8, verses 15 to 16. Paul says, The spirit you received brought, you, brought about your adoption to sonship. The Spirit you received, the Holy Spirit, brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Abba, Father. Now this term has nothing to do with the Catholic Church or Father Ted or the pop band that was quite famous a little while ago. Far from it. Abba is actually the, it's an Aramaic word that Jewish children would use to call their earthly fathers. And I'm telling you this because it's important we know the word Abba shows respect to the father as an authority figure, but also the deep, deep love between a father and their child. It's a very personal phrase used by children to their loving father. Believers here today, we get to call the creator of the universe, Abba, Father. Our Abba Father is close to us. He wants to hear from us intimately through intentional prayer. <coughs> not just to tick boxes. Not just to look holy to others like the religious leaders of the time have been doing. In fact, this is the main reason Jesus teaches his listeners here how to pray. Because they are surrounded by a group of hypocritical religious leaders called the Pharisees. And you know, something else I find interesting as well, that word hypocrite uh, is Greek for actors who wore different masks, who played different roles. And that's exactly what the Pharisees would do. They would, uh, would appear to be doing the right things in the right places, but their heart was far from God. They were rarely doing the right things for him. They would give to the needy to be seen by others. They would pray on street corners to be seen by others. They didn't care about being seen by their Heavenly Father. They give all the big talk, and I'm sure we know people like this in our, own, in our own schemes, they give all the big talk about how holy they were, how spiritual they were, but it was all just an act. Their hearts were far from God. So Jesus says here, listen, don't be like those hypocrites. Don't pray to be seen by others like they do. They'll get what's coming to them. Jesus is encouraging his followers to pray to their heavenly father here in Matthew 6, not to be seen by others. Because like Jesus to the believer, and I'll bang this drum over and over again this morning, God is our loving heavenly father. He's not some angry God that wants to punish us. It's the opposite of that. 
He's made us. He loves us. He wants to hear from us and help us through this life all the way to glory. I, listen, as Tim said, I haven't been a Christian long. I haven't been in the game very long, right, okay? And there's probably a lot wiser, more faithful saints than me who might have something different to say. But what I've noticed coming into the Christian life is the power of prayer is lost in the Western culture and also God being our loving Father is lost. There's a lot, and I've been guilty of this before too. I can have a very legalistic mindset. Do this to please God. Do that to tick a box. It's more personal than that. God is our loving heavenly Father who wants to hear from us, not to tick off a checklist. Oh, you read your Bible today, well done. Oh, you've done this today, well done. Nah, he wants to hear from us because he loves us and he wants to give us everything we need in this life to get us all the way to glory. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Isaiah 64, 7 says, Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you our potter. We are all the work of your hand. John chapter 16, verse 23. Truly, truly, I say to you, Jesus says, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Are we asking, believers? Are we asking? So, who is God? To the believer, he is our loving, heavenly Father. But guess what? He is much more than that too. He isn't just our loving, heavenly Father. He is also the ruler and creator of the universe. And where verse 9, back in Matthew 6, says God is, will help us to understand this. Our Father, where? In heaven. In heaven. Well, some of you might be thinking, I know I was the first time I read this. What does that mean? Isn't God everywhere? Everyone's telling me God is everywhere. Why is it saying he's in heaven here? Well, well, yes, he is everywhere. God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and he's, 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 in, he's on earth and in heaven. The Bible is clear about that. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39 it says, Know therefore today and lay it to your heart that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. There is no other. Psalm 115, our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. Psalm 139, where shall I go from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, under the earth, you are there. And finally, Psalm 103, the Lord has established his throne where? In the heavens. And his kingdom rules over all. You getting that? God is everywhere. On earth, in heaven, and he created both and all that is in them. That last verse in Psalm 103 there tells us that God's throne is in heaven. That means God is king over everything. He is king over everything. And Christians, guess what? We get to go into his throne room every time we pray. Let's think about this for a second, right? It may not be very popular up here, but we all know who King Charles is, yeah? I see a few nodding heads, but not, not really, not, not super nodding heads, and I get it, all right? So listen, King Charles is the king of Great Britain, yeah? And most of the time, he lives in a place called Buckingham Palace in London, yeah? We all know what that is? Good. I'm not going to bang this drum very long, I'll tell you that much. Anyway, sometimes you're probably getting the impression, you know, I'm a bit of a geek, yeah? I like watching little YouTube things. I'm quite new to social media. I don't have any social media. I never had it before as a, a Christian story for another time. But I've recently discovered the YouTube and all. Do you know what I mean? I've got a smartphone now and I like watching these little shorts that pop up, yeah? And I was watching these shorts of, I like it, man, tourists who got too close to the palace, right? Uh, and Buckingham Palace is surrounded by these people called the King's Guard, yeah? They have these red coats and these massive fluffy hats on, yeah? And uh, if someone who hasn't been invited gets too close to the palace, the King's Guard go mad. They go crazy, like. They're all right. They're generally quite chilled, right? But they've got... They've got big rifles and swords and they literally scream at people if they get too close or they think they're getting into the palace. And if a person still doesn't get lost, they get arrested or shot. You know, they're, they're quite heavy lads, really, who surround the palace. And that's not all. Around Buckingham Palace, where the king is, there are squadrons of armed police, mounted police on horseback, dog handlers, dotted all around Buckingham Palace. There are snipers watching over the place, satellites watching over the place. And they're all there to stop 
anyone who has not been invited getting too close to the king. That's a job. So then, if it's this difficult to get close to the king of Great Britain without being invited, how much more difficult do you think it would be getting close to the king of the universe without being invited? You would have no chance. No chance. But you want to know what I noticed on these YouTube shorts about King Charles? His family could come and go as they please. They flew straight past security. Enter the king's throne room. They'd be with the king there whenever they wanted and they could talk to him about whatever was on their mind or on their hearts. Well, guess what? Christians have the same privilege. Not with King Charles, thankfully. But instead, with the king of the universe. Why? Because we are his children. We are part of his family. So when we pray, we can walk into his throne room boldly. Hebrews 4.16 says this, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. These are amazing truths. Our Father in heaven is a sovereign ruler of all things and we can enter his throne room whenever we want when we pray to him. So I ask you the question again, are you praying? Are you entering his throne room regularly? Because if you think, if the enemy has convinced you, you can get through this life on your own, it's a lie. You're going to fall flat on your face. Trust me, I've done it probably hundreds of times. But let me encourage you this morning and say this. If you're struggling here this morning, you can enter your father's throne room for help whenever you want and he will answer you. It may not always be the answer you want, but he will answer you and it will be what's best for you. I can promise you that. Maybe some of us here today, by the way, don't have the greatest relationship with our earthly fathers. I'm here talking about a great heavenly father. Maybe you have really bad relationships with your earthly fathers. Well, let me reassure you, a relationship with your heavenly father is nothing like that. It's nothing like that. Yes, he may let you go through hard times, but it will be from a place of love, not punishment, because he wants what's best for you. And trust me when I say this, he will never, ever let you down. Thank you. Amen. Maybe some of us on the flip side of that coin have great relationships with our earthly fathers, and praise God if you do. But a relationship with your heavenly father is even better than that too. It's mental when I think of all this. And it makes it even more mental to me that believers get to call the all-powerful, all-knowing creator of the universe, Father, and we can talk to him whenever we want. So how? How should we talk to him then? Knowing God is our loving Father, but also the sovereign ruler of the universe, how should that help us pray? Well, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians that we should pray without ceasing. He says, 1 Thessalonians 5. And because God is our Father in heaven, we can, because we always have full access to him. He doesn't sleep, the Bible tells us. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber, he's not like us. He is there for us every second of the day. We should be buzzing about that. We should be talking to our Heavenly Father as much as possible. But we just don't, do we? We get bogged down with the... With, with life and with going to this place and going to that place and going over here and over there and doing whatever. Listen, I understand we're busy people, yeah? We're busy people. But something I find personally when I've taken even two minutes to intentionally pray to God and ask for his help or just thank him, whatever I was in a rush to get to, I always end up getting to <laughs> and I'm in a much better frame of mind when I get there. God gives me what I need and he wants to hear from us. And if we're willing to cut out the time to give to him, he gives us back tenfold. That's just how our Heavenly Father works. Those of us who have been Christians or are Christians in this room today will know that. The, 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 the minute amount of faith we give him, he rewards us abundantly for. Listen, 
Having this full access to our loving Heavenly Father means wherever you are in the universe and whatever you're going through, if you are a Christian, you can speak to Him and He will hear you. And not just hear you, He will answer you and give you exactly what you need. That's what verse 8 says back in Matthew 6. And by the way, I don't want to forget the young people here today, the kids and the teenagers, because this includes you, by the way. Quite often, I think, when we're teaching our Bibles or when we're going through the the Lord's Prayer can seem like this is something for adults. It's not. It's for kids too. Anyone who has put their faith in Jesus, God hears you too. And I want to say something to the young kids and teenagers here today. Maybe you're having a hard time at school and people are, are ripping you for being a follower of Jesus. That happens. It's something quite common back then in, in Nidri. Maybe you're trying to share the gospel with your mates or be a good witness on, on the track or, or in the sports team you're in. And you're just having a really hard time. Maybe for some of the younger ones or older ones, maybe you're scared of the dark at night or have nightmares and you don't know what to do. That's nothing to be ashamed of, by the way. I don't like the dark either. I want you to know something this morning, that you can ask God for help in these times. You can ask God for help in these times. Don't think he's some far off, unreachable, super powerful being who, who you can't have a relationship with. Yes, he is a sovereign ruler, creator of the universe, but he is your loving heavenly father if you have put your faith in his son. He wants to hear from you, whatever is in your heart, whatever you're going through, be it good or be it bad. So talk to your heavenly father and ask him for help. If any of you, kids and adults, are struggling to find the words to pray, don't worry, because <laughs> Jesus gives us a pretty good blueprint here in Matthew 6, doesn't he? If ever we're struggling. I notice the start of the prayer in verse 9. It's all about God, and it's not about us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our sovereign heavenly Father who has created us and graciously saved us deserves all the praise, honour and glory we can give him when we talk to him through prayer. Let me tell you what I've heard of people praying like. Let me tell you how I used to pray like. And do you know what? I must admit, I want to be very transparent here. Sometimes do when I'm tired. Yeah, God, I need this. I need that. I want this. I want that. Give me this. Give me that. I have to remind myself regularly that God ain't a vending machine. You know, he shouldn't be treated like one. He's a sovereign king of the universe. Would you speak to the king like that? I mean, I probably would have before I was a Christian, but the Lord has been, has been working on me, and I do pray about it, believe it or not. But the point is this. Even if that king was your father, and you had a closer relationship than he may have had with, with, with people who were not his children, if he was doing his job right, as a dad, he should lovingly pull you to one side and say, listen, son, that's not our daughter. That's not how you ask for things. <laughs> you know? I need this, I need that. Where are your manners? So let me ask you all a question this morning. Knowing who God is to you believers and what he has done for you, have any of you ever prayed to God and just thanked him? Just praised him? Can I tell you something? It's really hard. I've tried it and... I can get a minute in and it's come back to me. I'm so selfish. Narcissistic mentalities and the world that has come to all about me. It's harder than you think to just thank God because of the wickedness of our hearts. But persevere with it, believers. Because I hadn't realised it until recently and I was pulled aside by a far wiser brother in the faith than me who asked me the same question. So you talk about yourself a lot in your prayers. Ton of, you know, you know what it's like that pearl of wisdom from an older saint sometimes. That they don't say much, but when they do say stuff, it's either gold or it rips your heart out. You, you know what I'm on about. And I was just like, what? <laughs> and he, said, he said to me, have you ever just thanked God for what he's done for you? And I tell you, it transformed my prayer life. I still don't do it as much as I should, but thankfully God is gracious, isn't he? So, who is God? He's our sovereign, ruling, reigning, redeeming, loving Heavenly Father. Knowing this should help our prayers become God-honouring before they become self-honouring. And where is God? 
everywhere and enthroned in heaven. This should help us to pray often knowing we have full access to him every second of the day. We can boldly go into his throne room of grace. That's what his word tells us. Do what Jesus says in verse 9. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now, if you're anything like me, which hopefully you're not, but I sometimes like to look, I think sometimes while well, what I've learned, because I didn't do very well at school, there's words in the Bible and there's words in the Christian life that I'm just like, what are you saying? Like justification or hallowed. I'm like, what the heck is that? Do you know what I mean? So I go away and I try and look what they mean. So hallowed means something that is sacred, holy, and given the utmost respect, okay? It's something that, that deserves all the respect you have. And I say that because isn't that exactly what God's name deserves? All of our respect? We often respect people for the things they've done in life, don't we? I was going to mention Anthony Joshua, but he got banged right out the other week, didn't he? So he's probably not a good one. But think of Alexander Usyk. Yeah, see if Alexander Usyk, the boxer, walked in here today, or uh, and, and you know, you give him respect because you know what he's done. Yeah, what he's accomplished in life gives him that respect. Or maybe a football player. I was speaking to one of um, the, the really young kids about. He really likes a player for Manchester City called Erling Haaland. I don't know if I said his name right. Yeah, apparently he's quite good. So if he walked in, you'd give him the respect. I don't know any Hibs players, bro, because I, I don't really follow football side. But I'm sure there's some um, point. There we are, George Best, that'll do. If George Best walked in, you know, you know who he was and because of what he's done in life, you give him that respect, yeah? Well, listen to what God has accomplished. Isaiah 45, verse 12, says the Lord speaking, It is I who made the earth and created mankind on it. My own hands, my own hands stretched out the heavens and I put the stars where they were. I think that deserves some respect, doesn't it? So when we talk to our Father in prayer, let's remember who he is and start by giving his name the honour, glory and respect it deserves. It's a little thing. And I'm, I'm up here preaching to you as a dum-dum who, who missed this for so long, you know? And it's really transformed my prayer life. I encourage all of us when we leave here to go home and do what Jesus says back in verse 6 of Matthew 6. Go home, shut the door, bow your head and thank your heavenly Father for all he's done for you. Using this prayer as a template in Matthew 6. Psalm 100 or Psalm 150, a kind of great prayers of thanksgiving. You can slot between verse 9 and verse, verse 10. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And Because sometimes it can be hard to know what to say. Sometimes we don't have the words. But God's given us his word. <laughs> and there's lots in there we can say. So like Psalm 100, Psalm 150, they're good prayers of thanksgiving that I sometimes slot in between verse 9 and verse 10. And listen, one point I do want to make, Jesus is not condemning public prayer here in Matthew 6. I want to make that very clear. He often prayed in public, right? It's a good thing to, for, to, to pray together, you know? It's a good thing for corporate prayer as well in the church, very important. But have you noticed what Jesus did when he went to pray about personal things to the Heavenly Father. He took himself away from the public eye. In fact, he went up mountains. You have a look through the Gospels and have a look at the amount of times Jesus went up a mountain when he went to pray on his own and how long he removed himself from the public eye. I'd encourage us to do the same when we leave here this morning. Not up a mountain. You know, I'm not saying, go, if you want to go up a mountain and pray, great, okay? You don't get any spiritual brownie points, so you can go in your room and shut the door. Same thing, yeah? Just cut yourself off from everything around you and just have some alone time with you and your loving Heavenly Father. What privilege it is to be able, be able to speak to God our Father in this way. What a privilege it is. And you know all of this, I sometimes get to thinking, how can a bunch of rotten sinners like me and you have this personal, loving, father-child relationship with the creator of the universe. How can this be? We don't deserve this. We don't deserve to be able to come into his presence, to come into his throne room. But Jesus. But Jesus does deserve to. Because of what God's son, the Lord Jesus Christ, has done for us, we can become sons and daughters of God too.
That's how, that's the only way we can have this relationship with Christ, through his atonement. Through his atonement, he made us at one with God again. He brought us back into relationship with the Father. Jesus led the life we could never live. He died the death on the cross we all deserve and rose from the dead three days later, conquering death and paying the price for our sin. Not his, sinless. We're full of sin. Thank you, Jesus. By his blood, Jesus made a way for us to become sons and daughters of the ruler of the universe and get eternal life. We do this by saying sorry to God the Father for our sins and believing in his son Jesus. It all starts with Jesus. It all ends with Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Now, I mentioned life might not get easier as a daughter or son of God. I know some of us, myself included, find life much harder when we became Christians. But I'll tell you now, it's worth it. Because of what Christ had done for me, I had a strength, wisdom and peace to deal with life's problems that I never had before knowing Christ. Only your Heavenly Father can give that to you through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. The world can't give you it and it certainly can't give you eternal life. You can try and find it. Look at all the other religions in the world. It's all workspace. Work your way here. They're looking for what Christ gives his people. They're looking for that peace. They're looking for fulfillment. They're looking for purpose. They're looking for identity. They're looking for eternal life. God the Father, because of what his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, did for us, he gives us all of that. So if you're here this morning and have not put your faith in Jesus, I do want to tell you that you don't get to call this incredible God Father. In fact, you're his enemy. And by the way, it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of Almighty God. Hebrews tells us that. If you're living a life like the Pharisees on the outside, thinking you've got licked, thinking you're, you're all for God, but in the background, you're living for the enemy. You're up to no good. You're lying. You're, you're, you're doing all you can to go against God. You want to fulfill yourself, not what Jesus has called you to. I want to remind you of what Ecclesiastes says. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14 says, every secret thing will be brought into the light. Every secret thing. Now that, for me, is one of the most frightening verses in Scripture. But because of what Jesus Christ has done for me, I don't have to fear it. Listen, we all sin. We all lie. We all do wrong. We all get angry. We all get cross. We're sinners. But we can take it to the foot of the cross. Willful sin however well you're hiding it, will always come into the light. I pray for those who don't know Jesus today that they will come to know Jesus before it's too late. The Bible is very clear, isn't it, that one day every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. Would you want to bow down to God as his child or as his enemy? Would you want to bow down to God as his child or as his enemy? I know what I'd rather be. Children of God who have put their faith in his son Jesus get eternal life. Children of the world who have not put their faith in his son Jesus get eternity in hell. There's no getting away from it. There's no beating around the bush. That's what God's word tells us. But there's hope. There is hope found in believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. His life death, resurrection, and ascension. We often forget about the ascension bit, don't we? Without the ascension, guess what? We wouldn't have got the Holy Spirit. The church wouldn't have been equipped. He's up there interceding for us now, even. What love the Father has for us. What love the Father has for us. I was speaking to a very good friend of mine this week uh, who has just adopted a very special little boy. Uh, and turns out, I didn't know this, when you adopt someone, they get a new birth certificate. How mad is that? I didn't know that. But when you adopt someone, they get a new birth certificate. It's literally as if they've been born again. It's as if their old life is no more and they can start their new life under the love and care of someone new. 
what a picture of the gospel this is. Those who put their faith in Jesus are adopted by God. And guess what? We get new spiritual birth certificates and get to call the ruler of the universe Abba Father. Isn't that amazing? Know who God is this morning and what faith in his son Jesus gives you. It gives you full adoption into his family. It gives you full access to the king of the universe. So would all of our prayers give God the full glory and the honour he deserves. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let's pray to end. Lord God Almighty, we are so thankful and grateful for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross for us, to rise from the dead for us, and to ascend to your right hand. Father, we thank you that we can call you Abba, Father. We thank you that you love us, that you want to hear from us, that you want to help us through life. Father, you want to hear from us when the going's good. You want to hear from us when the going's bad. So would we be people, would we be children of yours who pray regularly, who come into your throne room regularly, who are in communication with you regularly? We can't get through this life without you. And Jesus, I pray you would walk with us through the struggles of life. Lord, as we go from here today, would your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? And would you fill us with your Holy Spirit that we could do your will and come boldly into your throne room of grace every day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Folks, we'll just close with our uh, closing song, For His Glory and Our Good. Um, so stand and sing.
Guys, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask myself or Phil or Sam um, about today's passage and the, the preaching. And if you have any prayer requests, uh, do bring them before us. We'd love to pray for you uh, as we close. But um, hear these words as we finish today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. 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 I believe there's tea and coffee for those that want that. <laughs>